Time to repent your sins. All right, time to repent your sins. So let's go over this. And um, it's a very important subject. Very important. All right, so let me start off by going through this conversation. I want to make this easy and simple to understand and show you the error of the devils. Um, this bozo right here, he says that once saved, always saved is a lie. And so I ask a question, how do you regain salvation after you lose it? And uh, Einstein says, repent of sin. All right, so uh, this is brilliant, right? But repent of sin. So when you sin, you're in debt to God, and the, you make an offering to God to cover your, to pay for your sin. And so the offering that Einstein makes is repent of sin. Well, that's never been an offering to God. That's never been a payment to God. And you go back all the way to Cain and Abel. They were making offerings to God. And then you can, uh, you know, and then Moses, he's, he set up the tabernacle and uh, set up a system where they could go in and make offerings to God for, as a payment to their sins. But it was not possible that um, the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sin. It was never possible. Alright, and so Jesus offered his body once for all. So now that payment is made once for all. It's, it's made. That payment has already been made by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. He's already made the payment for our sins. So this idea that you have to repent of sin as an offering to God, it, it completely nullifies everything Jesus did. Repent of sin is not a payment for sin. It's not it, it's not in the Bible anywhere. I mean, it's ridiculous. I don't even know what the hell that means. Repent of sin. It's not an offering to God. It's not a payment for your sin. Jesus already paid for your sin. And who in the world is saved? And, and then once they're saved... They no longer have any fleshly desires to sin. They're perfect in every single way. That never happens. The moment you are saved is the moment you are born of the Spirit of God. And you ought to have confidence in that. Right? Being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So the Spirit is working in us, and we ought to have confidence in that. And this is simple stuff, I get it. Uh, if we go to Second Timothy 3... I'll have to read 16. The all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. All right, so we're growing, and, and we are, we're growing in the Word of God, and the Spirit is guiding us and leading us into this spiritual growth of course we're still going to have our fleshly desires because we are in this body I think uh, doesn't Paul call it uh, a body of death oh wretched man that I am who shall deliver me from the body of this death alright so you think about the circumcision of Abraham 
where he cuts where they you know after eight days cut off the flesh well when Jesus comes it's going to be a fulfillment of that circumcision when our flesh is cut off completely and there is no more pain no more sorrow and no more death a complete resurrection or a complete uh, circumcision in the resurrection okay I mean that's pretty simple stuff this idea that just repent of sin it completely nullifies the death or the offering of Jesus Christ the same way you get saved in the first place in other words I have no idea how to get saved repent and be faithful I don't know what that means man the same conditions for receiving salvation are required to keep it it's that simple what what about Jesus man what about him laying down his life as a payment once for all you're just completely ignoring what Jesus did here. And John F. jumps in. He says, you don't believe Christ in any of his sayings. Uh, there's nothing in the Bible to support what he's saying. And you have to ignore everything that Jesus talks about. It's as if these people have never read the Bible, not even a single time in their entire life. And, of course, uh, Einstein Jr., he says, My friend, I only asked you a clear question and showed you what the Bible clearly says about that. If you deny Christ during your persecution, Christ will deny you before the Father, but you still insist he won't. You have believed a lie. Wake up. Wake up. Yeah. People that are dead asleep are telling those of us that are alive to wake up. That's just brilliant I'm gonna I, I've done this uh, multiple times but I'm gonna do it one more time Jesus said unto Peter verily I say unto thee that this night before the cock crow thou shalt deny me thrice and Peter did that and after he heard the cock crow he went out and wept bitterly wept bitterly alright and then Peter, did he lose his salvation three times? Why doesn't it talk more about that? If that, I mean, if you could lose your salvation, that would be very important. And then what was the point of Jesus paying for our sins? Did Jesus pay for our sins or not? Right? Jesus says, while I was with them, Peter being one of them, I kept them in thy name. I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me, I have kept. And none of them is lost. But the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. The son of perdition was Judas Iscariot. He was never saved. He was there for a reason. And the reason is that the scripture might be fulfilled. All of them that was with him, including Peter, he has kept and he has saved Peter never lost his salvation even though he denied the Lord three times all right and so you read uh, you gotta rightly you gotta study to show thyself approved a good workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth all right so you gotta understand um, you know the difference between uh, this idea that well if you deny Christ you lose your salvation well that's not in the Bible okay, let me see if I can find this verse real quick but whosoever shall deny being before men him will I also deny before my father which is in heaven if we go to verse 32 whosoever shall confess me before men him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. And of course, Peter absolutely did confess the Lord Jesus Christ before men. And he was saved. But he, was, he wasn't saved because of what he did. He's saved because of what God does. Right? And then he never lost his salvation. The, the context of this is this is people that are saved and this is people that are 
not saved, people that are have never been saved. All right, this isn't a simple, oh, I deny Jesus, like what Peter did. Salvation only comes from God. It's not what we do. I mean, have you never read uh, Second Ephesians? Or, I'm sorry, excuse me, Ephesians 2. There is no Second Ephesians. All right, so if you're looking through your Bible right now, for scratch that. Not Second Ephesians, but Ephesians 2. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves. You're not saving yourselves. Right? So go back here. How do you regain salvation? You can't. You can't even save yourself. Let alone regain saving yourself. We are saved by God. God is the one that saves. We are saved by the grace of God. For by grace, the grace of God, are you saved. And not of yourselves, right? You are not saved of yourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. Okay, oh, I'm such a good person. i am got extra rewards in heaven. Well, that's not in the Bible either, but that's another subject. So, anyways, I just want to kind of go over this. The repent of sin, that's not an offering to God. These people are acting as if this is a payment for your sin. Oh, just repent of your sin. You cheated on your wife. Well, yeah, just repent of your sin. It's all right. No, you're going to pay a price for that, buddy. If you're cheating on your wife, you got a price to pay while here on earth. But the price to pay for salvation has already been paid. And the Lord Jesus Christ paid it. To say otherwise is to completely nullify what Jesus Christ has done for us all. Alright, so does that make sense? Because I mean look, if you if you're saved, you're still gonna sin and there's still gonna be consequences for your sin, but it does not mean you're going to lose your salvation because Jesus already paid the price. He already paid for you. You're bought. He paid for you and look if you don't like it, that's you know, that's too bad. You know, once you're saved, you're stuck. You're stuck with everlasting life. And you can't get out of it. If you think that's a trap, man, that's crazy. But, whatever.